Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Gyan Sampada. In our previous classes we were discussing about how to find out the thickness of any given thin film. So already under this thickness measurements we saw that there are two measurement techniques one is electrical and another one is optical out of which under electrical measurements we have seen the approach using resistivity measurement and capacitance measurement and under optical measurements we have gone through the optical absorption method and today we are going to discuss about optical interference method of finding out the thickness of any given thin film so let's start with the optical interference technique so in the word itself we can understand in determination of thickness we need a light which is referred as optical and interference means the phenomena which is going to take place which is nothing but superposition in short so let's understand how the process is going to take place so there are several methods for determining the optical constants of films which involve thickness as a parameter so these optical constants and thickness are interrelated and if optical constants are known then easily thickness can be calculated using certain relations so what are those relations that we will be seeing in today's class and among these methods there are mainly two types one is photometric technique and another one is spectrophotometer technique and both are based on optical interference phenomena and find widespread applications for measurements and control of multi layer dielectric as well as semiconductor films so that is the significance of this method whereas in our first approach where we understood the details about optical absorption method there the main preference was for insulator films and here it is with respect to dielectric and semiconductor films so let's study one by one first one is the photometric method so if a transparent film or slightly absorbing film is deposited on a transparent substrate so both are transparent but the difference is with respect to the refractive index so both film as well as the substrate are having different refractive index then the optical reflectance and the optical transmittance behavior of the film substrate combination shows an oscillatory behavior with increasing film thickness due to interference effects so for this type of combination if we plot a graph then we can observe oscillatory nature of the curve that is reflectance and transmittance are showing oscillations with respect to different film thicknesses so as the film thickness is going on changing then with respect to that the oscillations are going to change the amplitude or the reflectance and transmittance is going to vary based on this again film thickness can be determined and reflectance is reduced or enhanced depending on the relative values of indices of the film and substrate material even if both are transparent but still the refractive index is going to be different so depending on the relative values of these indices the reflectance can be increased or decreased and the film thickness is determined from the maxima and minima of reflectance which occur at the intervals which is given by 2m lambda by 4 is equals to nf into t so here nf is the film refractive index so n generally represents refractive index and f is with respect to film so film refractive index t is the thickness of the film which is deposited lambda is the wavelength of light and m is the order of interference with respect to maxima or minima so if you plot a graph where we are plotting reflectance or transmittance along y axis in terms of percentage and along x axis there is a number of film layers that is thickness is going on increasing so here there is single layer mono layer double layer triple and so on and clearly we can observe here this nature is oscillatory the solid line represents the reflectance whereas the dotted line represents the transmittance 
if the film is thin that is in the beginning of the x axis in that case reflectance is less but transmittance is more with respect to the reflectance but as you go on for higher film thicknesses that is number of layers of the film are going on increasing in that case reflectance is going on increasing but transmittance is going on decreasing however both are showing the oscillatory behavior so based on this transmittance or reflectance easily thickness can be measured which is given by this formula if you just rearrange t can be found out very easily so this nature can be easily understood that is if you consider a butter paper single paper is going to transmit more and reflect very less if you go on increasing the number of butter papers one behind the other slowly the transmitted radiation the transmitted light is very less but majority of the light will be reflected back in the same way that is if you consider opaque medium then light is not going to transmit that's what is going to happen here as the thickness is going on increasing the light cannot penetrate through it or transmittance is very less and totally it will be reflected that's why reflectance is near to 100% here this is how we interpret the graph and now let us understand how we are going to use that formula in taking an example let us consider the wavelength of radiation used is 1 micrometer refractive index of film which is a silicon oxide film is equals to 2 m is equals to 4 that is the order of maximum or minimum so based on this m value we are going to find out what is the thickness for that position that is if m is 4 then thickness will be obtained after 4 maxima or 4 minima traversed and for these values the thickness comes out to be t is equals to 1 micrometer of silicon oxide film that is using the formula which we just saw in the previous slide that is 2 m lambda by 4 is equals to nf into t so t will be equal to m lambda by 2 nf then some points to note is that the high energy or high intensity laser sources also can be utilized as a source of monochromatic light which will be used for determination of thickness and also that with increasing number of layers that is as the thickness is going on increasing the amplitude of oscillatory variation is going to decrease that is evident from the previous graph that is if you observe this graph here the oscillatory behavior is more pronounced and here it is less that is as the thickness is going on increasing the oscillations are going to reduce that is amplitude will reduce delta r or delta t for higher thicknesses is going to reduce and this is the reason for reducing the sensitivity of the method so this method which is photometric method is less sensitive for thicker films so we can say this is the limitation of it so just to sum up photometric method main thing is that these are applicable for dielectric and semiconductor films means their thickness measurements and based on the optical constants like the wavelength whichever is utilized for the technique which is a constant then the refractive index and using the formula easily we can find out the thickness of the thin film and for a thicker films the sensitivity of the method is going to decrease which is a kind of limitation for it so principle is interference and main thing is the oscillatory nature of reflectance and transmittance with respect to different film thicknesses so this is about photometric method and now let us move on to the next method which is spectrophotometric method so what is the difference between the previous method and this one or what is the upgradation let us see again we are having a substrate on which a thin film is deposited then as we are studying it under optical interference method we need light or radiation so if a light is incident let us say at an angle theta from a medium of index n not on to a film index of n1 so radiation is incident on the film and the refractive index here is n not and the refractive index of film is 
n1 also the thickness of the film is taken as t which we need to determine and it is deposited on a substrate of refractive index n2 and clearly we can observe that n1 which is the refractive index of the film is lying between n0 and n2 and in such condition the light is going to undergo interference and that's why the reflected light will show an interference maximum for a wavelength lambda when the path difference is 2n1t cos theta is equals to m into lambda where m is the integer which gives the order so we can say that it is similar to that of the Bragg condition where the path difference has to be equal to the integral multiple of wavelength for constructive interference to take place. Let us say that n1 is greater than n0 as well as n2. In that case the reflected intensity will show a minimum when the path difference which is defined as 2n1 into t cos theta is equals to m lambda means a dark band is observed. So here it is reverse here in this case destructive interference is going to take place but in Bragg condition constructive interference will take place. So that is the difference and the maximum will be occurring if the path difference is equal to 2m minus 1 by 2 into lambda which can be rearranged in order to give us m minus half into lambda. So this is the condition for maximum which means a bright band will be observed which shows that constructive interference has taken place. So when white light is used the reflected light will show a maximum for various wavelengths for which the interference condition is satisfied and this is the basis of visual method of monitoring the film thickness and it was realized first by Newton as early as 1675. But again the limitation is that this color judgment method fails for thick films where many maxima in reflected spectrum make the light appear as white because as there are a number of maximum they are going to again mix up to give the combination leading to a white light. So clearly we can say that again visually that is just by observation we can't clearly say that whether it is a maximum or minimum due to which we cannot say what is the thickness of the film. So how to overcome this? That's why spectrophotometer is employed to measure the transmitted or reflected intensity as a function of wavelength and thus record positions of the maxima and minima. So the limitation of visual method is overcome by using spectrophotometer and that's why the name is given as spectrophotometer or spectrophotometric method. So main thing is that clearly we can observe minima as well as maxima using this device even for thicker films and also maxima and minima can be easily recorded where for finding out the thickness we have to substitute back in place of m m is nothing but the integer which gives us the order so with respect to different minima or maxima we need to put the value of m wavelength will be known easily we can find out what is the thickness of the film so let us understand it more considering an example so if mth order maximum occurs at a wavelength lambda 1 and m plus 1th order at lambda 2 then for a normal incidence we have mainly two equations or conditions which is 2 n1 t is equals to m lambda 1 is equals to m plus 1 lambda 2. The condition is that the path difference should be equal to integral multiple of wavelength. So 2 n1 t into cos theta normal incidence means theta is equals to 90 cos 90 is 1 that's why we are writing 2 n1 into t is equals to the maxima with the order m is occurring at wavelength lambda 1. So that will be equal to m lambda 1 and also there is a maximum at m plus 1th order with respect to wavelength lambda 2. So these can be equated and 
From this equation easily we can say that by solving 2 n 1 t is equals to lambda 1 lambda 2 divided by lambda 1 minus lambda 2. So, this is the main equation used in spectrophotometric method in order to find out the thickness of the given thin film. So, if n 1 is known that is refractive index of thin film t can be easily determined provided that index does not vary rapidly with respect to wavelength because some of the films will be reactive because of the material which is present in the fabrication of the film. And in that case with respect to change in the radiation wavelength the reflective index is also going to change. That is why when we are using this method main care has to be taken that the index is not going to vary or change rapidly with respect to change in the wavelength of the radiation and in that case this equation is valid. So, easily we can say that the wavelength is already known or will be recorded with respect to the order of minima or maxima using the spectrophotometer and by knowing the n1 value easily we can find out the thickness of the film. Again some things to note generally a double beam recording spectrophotometer has been used for thickness measurement of mainly epitaxial semiconductor films which are deposited on the substrate having different index and also using this method a precision of better than 1% of silicon dioxide film that is SiO2 films of thickness corresponding to 400 angstrom has been obtained. So, easily we can say that this method has overcome the limitation of the first method. Here precision is better and even such a small thickness or even we can say such a thin film thickness can be measured that is 400 angstrom that is 400 into 10 raise to minus 10 meters which is very minute. So, these are the two main methods which we deal when we are studying optical interference methods of determination of thickness of any thin film. Again using the interference fringes or x-ray interference fringes using these things also we can find out the thickness of the thin film but our concentration was mainly on photometric and spectrophotometric method and main thing is the optical constants. So, if we record or if we have the optical constants easily thickness can be calculated and different methods are having different precision. So, as per the requirement different methods can be utilized for thickness measurement as well as thickness control. So, as the film is deposited simultaneously the thickness of the thin film also can be recorded or controlled as per the requirements. So, these are some of the details about thickness measurement techniques where we started from the electrical methods where we dealt with four probe setup which comes under resistivity measurement then capacitance monitors then in optical measurements we dealt with two main techniques one is radiation absorption method and in today's class we saw radiation interference method. Just we need to remember the formula whichever is discussed in photometric method the formula is 2m lambda by 4 is equals to nf into t and in spectrophotometric method 2n1 into t is equals to lambda 1 lambda 2 divided by lambda 1 minus lambda 2. So, these are some of the details for thickness measurement techniques and in our next class we will be dealing with the vibrating quartz method which is again a important concept. So, till then study well, practice well and thank you for watching.